Podcast. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from the Carpathian Basin. I hope everybody is having a good week so far, staying strong, staying productive, and positive. Hi, Naima. Hi, Sandeep. Jama, Ashraf, uh, Dil Murad. Good to see many of our students both here in the class. Abiman, nice to see our members joining in on time as well. Students in this class, we are doing some listening practice with some strategy. And um, as usual, the uh, presentation is uh, brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. It's a very good idea to visit us there and check out our packages. And for the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, you will find lots and lots of materials, uh, videos, HD videos, practice exams, interactive courses, uh, professional help for speaking and for writing as well. I'll quickly show you what these look like. We will be using one of these sites for the audio today. This is the academic here, aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Click that big red button to join the premium package. And for the general version of the exam, it's the green background. Click that big red button uh, to join us there. Welcome. I see lots more members joining in. That's great. Okay, everyone, if you have questions uh, about the IELTS exam or our products, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. I will uh, gladly help you out. And uh, again, uh, listening today, tomorrow we'll finish up that task two, then we'll do parts three and four of the listening. So we'll get right into it. Um, this listening today is coming from our first exam book. We're currently working on our third exam book. And uh, this is uh, test number one following the review test. It's CD2. Uh, so we're going to get right into this listening. Importantly, I am going to play the audio through a nice Bose speaker and my headset microphone. If it's quiet for you, just turn up the volume, uh, use a headset. I highly recommend it. And uh, please, please, please do not put your answers in the chat directly. Let everybody answer on their own. And then at the end, when we're finished uh, part one of the listening section, then we'll go through the answers uh, together. Okay. All right. So uh, for the audio, I'm just going to hop over to our academic website here, go into my student account where I find all of my materials, uh, including the audio CDs. And this one here is coming from the second test, so CD2 track one. Uh, here we go, students. Get ready uh, to listen and answer some questions, and then we'll talk strategy after. So here we go. Uh, three, two, one. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two men as one of the men buys a gym membership. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Good afternoon. I'm interested in purchasing a gym membership. Of course, sir. What length of membership are you looking for? We have options ranging from one month to two years. Can I get one for three months? I don't want to make too much of a commitment. Of course. The man says he wants a three-month membership, 
So this answer has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon. I'm interested in purchasing a gym membership. Of course, sir. What length of membership are you looking for? We have options ranging from one month to two years. Can I get one for three months? I don't want to make too much of a commitment. Of course. Before we can get you started on getting into shape, I'm going to need some personal details from you. Certainly. Let's start with your name. William Bacon. Bacon spelled the same as the breakfast food? Yes. B-A-C-O-N. OK, William. Now I need your residential address. Oh, please call me Bill. I feel odd being called William. OK, Bill. So your address then? Right. I live at 1653 Spoonar Street in Liverpool. Oh, I know that street. My grandmother lived there when I was growing up. The street name is spelled with an A, is it not? Yes, that's right. Spoonar is spelled S-P-O-O-N-A-R. And your postcode here in Liverpool? PK387YQ. TK387YQ? No, PK387YQ. Right. Now we need your date of birth. April 9th, 1980. And your telephone numbers, starting with your home number. I don't have a home number, just a mobile number. It is 312-77-8391. Fine then. Now, do you have any medical issues we should know about, such as asthma? I have no medical concerns. I'm in perfect health as far as I know. Now, I need to ask you a few questions to find out what type of gym membership fits your lifestyle the best. There is more than one type of gym membership? Oh yes, there are a number of different options. We have our most basic membership, which allows you to work out on the machines on the main floor of our town centre facility. Then there is our premium membership, which allows members usage of the machines on the second floor of our town centre facility, as well as access to our third floor lounge. What is so special about the machines on the second floor? Nothing really, but our gym is extremely busy, and often the machines on the second floor are the only ones available. However, as I said, they are only open to the premium members. Tell me about the lounge. Our lounge is fantastic. The room is big, about 50 feet by 50 feet, and we have two large televisions and many comfortable chairs. There is also a full bar service and a complimentary snack bar. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. That sounds great. Are there any other membership options? Yes, there is one more. We call it the Premium Plus membership and it allows customers to use any of our gym facilities in the country. So if I go to London or Kent or Newcastle, can I use your gyms there? Well, yes, but we don't currently operate a gym in Newcastle. We do, however, operate a total of 22 gyms in England, not including this one in Liverpool. 23 gyms, that's impressive. What is the price difference between these memberships? Well, at your three month level, the basic membership is 53 pounds. The premium is 84 pounds and the premium plus is 95 pounds. That's quite a step up from basic to premium. Yes, but it's quite good value for the additional services and location options. I'll have to think this over a bit before I make a decision. Just so you know, Bill, we are running a promotion right now. If you sign up another person along with yourself, we will give both of you premium memberships for the price of basic memberships. Wow, that's a great deal. I wonder who I should ask to join with me. Greg loves to work out, but he's already has a gym membership. I could ask Steve, but he's so busy with work all the time. I think I will ask my neighbour Kate. 
She's been trying to get back into shape after having her baby last autumn. Wonderful. I will see you soon then. Yes, you will. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. It's Mike, and it was a pleasure helping you. I will hopefully be in tomorrow with Kate. Does 11 work? No, sorry, I'm not in until midday. I will see you midday then. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. You take that half minute to check your answers. Make sure that you didn't miss any easy answers or information. And uh, we'll go through the answers together and talk a little bit of strategy. All right. And so let's brighten our day a bit here. I darkened it up for that one question so you could see it clear, the diagram question. But here we go. All right, so uh, importantly, I hope that all of you were visualizing this. So hopefully you imagine that you are joining a gym in England and you're being asked some information. Now, uh, since this year, uh, they do not have the example in listening part one anymore. So don't expect this, okay? Uh, they had this for many, many years and then in this year, 2020, they decided to get rid of the example and just go right into uh, question one. So keep that in mind. All right. So uh, first of all, uh, some demographic information, personal information uh, from this gym applicant. Uh, his name is William. And uh, yeah, it's like the breakfast food bacon. Um, so B-A-C-O-N. And of course, you have to use a capital letter for the B. Otherwise, you'll get it wrong. So it's bacon, capital B. Uh, it's correct. Uh, you can write it um, all capital like this as well. Okay. Uh, sorry. It's bacon. Uh, bacon. Uh, this is slower. Okay. It's faster to write with lowercase. Keep that in mind. It's slower to write all capital letters. It's just more writing. Okay, you have more lines, you're covering more ground. Uh, so of course it's going to be slower. Writing lowercase is faster. So one quick tip that I can give you on the paper-based exam is uh, write in lowercase when you're listening and then when you transfer your answers, because at the end you will have 10 minutes to take your answers from your question booklet and put it into the answer booklet. So in that, 10, in those 10 minutes, you can um, write it all capital, okay? So to be fast, and so you pay more attention while you're listening, uh, you can write it all small like this, bacon, and then in the 10 minutes when you're transferring, then you can have enough time to rewrite it. Just make sure that you don't make a spelling mistake while you're making that transfer. That's very important, okay? Does that make sense? So it's faster, but it's not correct. This is slower, it's correct, but you don't wanna do that right away. You wanna do that in the 10 minutes transfer time. Does that make sense? So that's kind of one way that you can optimize your time and your accuracy, right? Optimize time and accuracy, okay? So Nuffpreet says, yeah, this is what I practice. Good for you, Nuffpreet. Okay, great. Yeah, just don't make spelling mistakes, okay? So be really careful about that. Okay, um, just so people don't get confused. Um, all right, so his address is 1653 something street. Okay, what is his address? Spoonar, spelt with an A, M, Verma. Okay, Spoonar. They emphasize that, right? So Spoonar, S-P-O-O-N-A-R, Spoonar. It's spelt with an A, correct? Yeah, that's right, S-P-O-O-N-A-R. Okay, careful. All right, uh, postal code. So what is his postal code? Uh, usually in part one for this kind of information, they'll say it twice. So try to get it the first time, but don't rush. Listen for the second time. Okay. Oh, yes, uh, these classes usually go from Wednesday to Saturday, and the class schedule is on the community board on the channel. Okay, Alex says it's PK3. 
387YQ. There's a lot of other students, Angel, Navpreet, who seem to agree. Um, and that's correct. So PK 387YQ. Okay. Um, again, I definitely recommend using capital letters for these with the numbers for these kinds of information. So pay attention to that. Date of birth is given. And then uh, the man asks for the residential number. Uh, what does the applicant answer? It's a P. It's a very clear P. Uh, if you're um, uncomfortable, Mohammed Azat, with hearing the P and the B sound, definitely listen to uh, these words. Uh, you can check Cambridge Online Dictionary for pronunciation of words beginning with P versus B so that you get more comfortable with them. Cambridge Online Dictionary. Okay. So Angel says none. Muhammad Azat says no number. Uh, let's check how many words were allowed. Okay. It says complete the form below, so it doesn't look like we're limited. It'll usually say something like no more than one word or no more than two words. So no number should be okay here. Um, definitely none will be a correct answer. Uh, why do I know that none is uh, the right answer? Because when the man asks about medical issues, they give the answer none. So when the residential number is asked, none should be okay as well. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's keep going. Uh, no is okay. Yeah. So no, no number, none. Those would be okay. Yeah. Up him on, you could put no number in there. It'd be fine. All right. So this was the question that's a little bit bright because it's white on dark blue here. So I'll just darken it up for this one question briefly. Okay, so this uh, one, you have to really visualize, pay attention. Uh, the, uh, the man describes the lounge in the gym. And one of the first facts that he says is that it's 50 feet by 50 feet. So right away, I know that it cannot be B and it cannot be D. Uh, it must be one of these two here right? Because these are the two squares. So it has to be square because it's 50 by 50. Okay. All right. And then the other point that he makes is there's televisions with lots of seating. So that one tells us that A is correct. So good job for all of you who got A. Okay. Um, here the television only has one seat. Okay. So lots of seats. All right. Okay. Good. Uh, so that was the first five. Okay. These should be fairly simple. These are meant to kind of put you at ease and get you focused. A lot of students are nervous uh, during these first five questions. So these are supposed to be fairly easy. You should be getting all of these correct. For those of you who are aiming for a band 6.57 or more. Okay. And they start to get a little bit more challenging for part one. Uh, here we go. Question number six, you have to match the membership option with its benefits. And then here you have, this is just six. So in your answer sheet, you would have the block for six, and then you would need to put B and C. Um, so B something, C something into your answer sheet like that. Okay. Uh, so what was it? The premium is access to the lounge, right? Number one. And the premium plus is access to the facilities around England. So that makes sense. There's logic there. Uh, as long as you're focused, you can kind of get that without really even listening. You just have to pay attention. So don't panic. Even if you missed it, you can figure that out. Okay. All right. So B1, C2. Okay, let's keep moving along. Uh, we have some short fill in the blanks to finish off part one. Question number seven, 
how many gyms does the company operate in England? There was a little bit of a confusing piece of information there. Hopefully that didn't catch you. Uh, M. Verma Coding got it right. Yes, yeah, Simran, be patient. So the man says 22, not including this one. And then the applicant says, oh, so 23. So the correct answer is 23 because it's 22 plus one, right? So 23. And they say this, okay? Now, this is the kind of uh, information where in part one, they give you 23. So they're not so tricky. The man says 23, the applicant. Uh, but in part three or part four listening, they would say something like um, 22, not including this one, and there's another one under construction. They'll do something like that. So you have to be careful, okay? So the correct answer here is 23. Okay, and what is the cost of the premium membership? Okay, what is the cost of the premium membership? All right, lots of answers coming up. Uh, 84 pounds. Okay, the word pounds is given, so you only need the number careful you don't need to uh, put the symbol or the word pounds um, 84 is correct okay it's 84 pounds so good for you uh, 23 I think was the basic right um, who is Bill going to ask to join him at the gym so he's got a friend but the friend already has a gym membership so who does who does he ask yeah Kate very good Moria yeah, Prashant, Nikhil, very good. Kate, and make sure the K is big. So when you're writing Ks, okay, make sure that this line comes to the same height as the first uh, vertical line, okay? Uh, it has to be a very clear capital K, okay? It's a name, so it's got to be capital K, Kate. Okay, what time is Bill meeting Mike the following day? Answer is... Midday. One tricky point here. LePay's got it. It's one word. Midday is one word. Midday. British like to say midday. Americans, Canadians like myself, we like to say noon. Okay. Uh, both would be okay. If you write midday, nah, IELTS is quite strict. They will probably mark that wrong because it's incorrect. So midday is one word. Midday. Okay, spelling does count. So if you have a clear space there, IELTS will catch you for that. It's a cruel world, but it's the way it is. Okay. Jot, what's your question? All right, count up your scores, everyone. What did you get for part one? Now, part one, uh, no hyphen, it's still not accurate. Okay. Uh, Ferdov says after midday. No, because Ferdov's the man says, I will see you at midday then, very directly. Does, he w doesn't say, I'll see you after midday. He says, I'll see you at midday, okay? And one interesting point that a lot of you will realize going to school and living in UK, Australia, Canada, uh, is that people are very punctual. So when they say midday, it doesn't mean 15 minutes after midday. It means midday. They will be there at noon, okay? If you're not there at noon, they might be gone, all right? Okay, uh, nine out of 10 is good. Uh, 10 out of 10 is good. If you have less than eight, be careful, practice, check what you did wrong. This is part one. You should have most of these answers, if not all of them correct. Jod says, sir, two word limit. So what about if we write uh, neighbor Kate? Yeah, you can, Jod, you can write neighbor Kate. Uh, but neighbor is not necessary in this case, and you have to be careful not to actually make a spelling mistake and make sure that Kate is big, okay? So you don't need neighbor Kate because Kate is enough to identify, all right? Okay. Um, yeah, AH is asking, well, they didn't spell the name Kate, okay? Uh, careful with some very common simple names in English like Mike, John, Kate, Sarah, they might not give you the spelling, okay? Uh, it is expected that you would know some of these very common names in English because I'm sure as many of you realized in your English books, 
uh, textbooks, you see these names all the time, right? So, uh, Boba Murad, tomorrow midday would be okay as well. Yeah. Hyphen Ayushi is not good. It's not the right spelling. Okay. All right. So, so far, so good. Let's keep going. Let's do um, part two. Okay. Let's move it along. Let's get into some part two. Gets quite a bit more challenging for part two. Again, students, please uh, have good listening exercise here as well. Uh, don't write your answers into the chat. Okay. Wait until the end. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's get into part two. It'll darken up the screen for this question as well a little bit so you can see it clear. There, now you can see it. And we'll get right into it. Um, yeah, the biggest step up, I think, is between part one and part two as far as difficulty is concerned in the listening section. So really get focused by the time you get to this part two here. Okay. All right. Just give me one moment. Here we go. Just hopping back to our website here and firing up the next audio. All right. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a recording of a travel show about tourism to Calgary, Canada. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Hello, I'm Deborah Sloan and welcome to Hot Spots, the travel show that highlights great tourist spots around the world. Today we have a representative from Calgary, Canada, who is going to tell us a little about the city. Thanks, Deborah. Yes, my name is Robert and I'm going to tell you all about the wonderful city of Calgary. Sorry, I hate to interrupt, Robert, but can you tell me exactly where Calgary is? I'm sure many of our viewers are wondering. Sure. Calgary is the largest city in the province of Alberta, which is the second most western province in Canada. Alberta lies directly east of the province of British Columbia, of which Vancouver is a very well-known tourist destination, and directly west of the province of Saskatchewan, of which Regina is the capital. Canada is a very big place, and that is shown by just how far Calgary is from many of the other major Canadian cities. Calgary is over 1,000 kilometres from Vancouver, and over 3,400 kilometres from Toronto, Canada's largest city. Canada is definitely a very spacious country. Yes, indeed. Well, let me tell you a little about Calgary. Calgary is a beautiful city of approximately one million people, situated next to the Rocky Mountains. It is known most, perhaps, for the world-famous Calgary Stampede. Is that with the cowboys and bull riding? Yes, and it's held every July in the city. The Stampede attracts more than a million visitors each year from all over the world. It is referred to as the greatest outdoor show on earth. Another fact that Calgary is well known for is oil, which was first discovered in the area in 1902. With the boom in oil prices over the past 40 years, Calgary has seen its population grow from 400,000 in 1971 to over 1 million in 2007. In that time period, Calgary was by far the fastest growing city in Canada. Many sports fans will know that Calgary was host to the 1988 Winter Olympics. And to this day, Calgary remains a winter activity destination with several world-class facilities dedicated to many winter sports, from bobsled to curling to speed skating and everything in between. One of Calgary's biggest icons is its hockey team, the Calgary Flames, who play in the National Hockey League, or NHL as it's better known. Well, they have been one of the more successful teams in the league during their 30 years in Calgary, even winning the coveted Stanley Cup in 1989. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20.
Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. On the cultural side of things, Calgary boasts a number of festivals during the year, including a fringe festival, a comedy festival, as well as the Calgary International Film Festival. Calgary is also home to numerous theatre companies, as well as the Calgary Opera, Alberta Ballet, and the Calgary Philharmonic Orchestra. Sorry to interrupt again, Robert, but this programme is called Hotspots. So what's the weather like in Calgary? I've heard it's cold. Yes, in the winter it can be quite cold, but in the summer it is also quite warm, with average summer high temperatures hovering around 23 degrees Celsius, while average winter high temperatures are around minus 2 degrees and routinely go down to minus 20. Calgary experiences something quite unique when it comes to the weather. It has these weather fronts called Chinook winds, which can blow through the city in the winter and temporarily raise the temperature by up to 15 degrees Celsius. These Chinook winds can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days, and they are welcomed with open arms by the people of Calgary. Calgary is also one of the sunniest cities in Canada, as well as one of the driest, which makes up for a lot of the cold weather. Honestly, though, if you're looking for a winter getaway to a hot spot, as you say, Calgary is not the place to go. But if you are looking for a winter getaway that includes skiing or snowboarding or anything else done best in the cold weather, nobody does it better than Calgary. Thank you, Robert, for that fascinating look at Calgary. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Again, students, use that half minute to check your answers. We'll go through them together, starting with this first one. I'll keep it a little bit dark so you can see the question more accurately. Okay, so this is a radio show uh, talking about hot spots. And uh, the first point that they discuss is the location of the city of Calgary, which hopefully many of you realize is in the province of Alberta. So Calgary is there. And then they give some directions here of where it is. All right. Uh, you have this uh, compass to give you a little bit of help. And then uh, here you have two questions, 11 and 12. So for question 11 and question 12, you have to figure out what it is. So is 11 A, B, C, D, or E? Is 12 A, B, C, D, or E? Uh, what is 11? Anybody get what is 11? So some of you are saying 11 is B and 11 is A. Uh, a is a city. It's, Vancouver is a city. Uh, these are provinces. So this is the province of Alberta, and this is number 11 is the province of, that's right, British Columbia. It's D. Okay. So what was a little bit tricky here is the way the person was explaining this. So um, the man says that uh, Alberta lies east of the province of British Columbia. So this is British Columbia. And Alberta is east of the province of uh, British Columbia. And Alberta is west of the province of Saskatchewan. Okay, so it's in this direction. So you have to be a little bit careful here. So 11 was D and 12 was B, Saskatchewan. Okay. With directions, you have to pay really careful attention to prepositions. So what is the direction preposition, right? BC is west of Alberta. Alberta is east of BC. Everybody got me? Okay. So one more time with Saskatchewan. So Alberta is west of Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan is east of Alberta. Is that clear now? That was a tricky one. And that's where you really have to have your uh, listening ears fine-tuned and paying attention to those prepositions. Okay, uh, let's keep moving along. Hopefully some of these next ones aren't quite as tough. 
Of course, if you know a little bit about Canadian geography, that would definitely help because then you know it goes British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, and then the Maritime Provinces. Okay? All right. It's good to know a little bit about that geography. Those of you who are planning to immigrate to Canada at some point, you will be tested on that, by the way, on that basic geography. You will be given a booklet to learn, and they will test you on that. I am from Victoria, Navpreet, which is in the province of British Columbia, and it's uh, west of the city of Vancouver on Vancouver Island. Okay. So let's keep going. Here we go. Uh, they talk about a million people. Okay. Uh, one million people is the number used to describe two groups in the recording. Which two of these groups does it describe? The population of Alberta, the population of British Columbia, population of Calgary, the number of visitors to the Calgary Stampede each year or the number of visitors to Calgary each year. So here it's question 1314. The order doesn't matter. You just have to get them correct. Janil and Nikhil say it's C and D or D and C. Um, yeah, that's correct. C and D. So the population of Calgary is 1 million people and the visitors to the Calgary Stampede is a million people. Can you imagine? That city goes from 1 million to 2 million people. Um, and unfortunately, this past year, of course, that greatest show on earth, the Calgary Stampede, I believe was canceled because of COVID. You might want to check up on that. But this year, 1 million people definitely did not show up to Calgary for that event. People come from all around the world. Many people come from America as well, bull riding, cowboys, cowgirls, all that fun goes down at the Calgary Stampede. If you like horses, animals, it's a great place to be during that time. All right, um, here we go with the next questions. Uh, number 15, which industry is Calgary well known for? A, wheat, B, oil, See natural gas. Yeah, OSBC gets a lot of visitors throughout the year, but that Calgary Stampede, that's just for a two-week event. Um, yeah, oil. So make sure you put 15. Don't put oil. You'll get it wrong. Put B. Okay? It's multiple choice. For multiple choice, listen for the answer. Don't just stare at the answers. Listen for the answer, as I've said a few times in the past. Number 16, which of these events did Calgary host? The Stanley Cup, Winter Olympics, or Expo 88, number 16, Boatier says, that's also B. Shucks Zedbeck agrees. Yeah, Boba Murad, Victor. Yeah, it is the Winter Olympics. A bonus question, I always like asking this one whenever I'm doing this uh, listening just for some sports trivia. Uh, how many Winter Olympics has Canada hosted? In the modern era so how many winter olympics has canada been host to anybody know for Dobbs says three yes you're right it is it's three. First one montreal second one calgary and most recently in 2010 it was vancouver for those of you who are into winter sports. And I was fortunate enough to go to the one in Vancouver and see some events. It was fantastic. Okay, uh, question 17. Uh, write no more than two words and or a number for each answer. Average summer highs in Calgary reach how many degrees Celsius? Just one number here is all you need. Yeah, 23. The man says they hover around 23. Yeah, okay, good. Nicely done. Okay, and then you had some complete the information below. You had to write no more than two words. Okay, keep it simple. Don't overthink these. This is still part two. It's not quite as challenging as part three. So average winter highs in Calgary reach something 
two degrees. Darshak and Pandya agree that this is minus. Yeah, and uh, please don't write the symbol minus, okay? That would be awkward, and they might mark that wrong. In fact, they'll probably will. Um, the reason why, so you think, well, hey, well, you know, I can write the symbol percent or dollar sign for dollar, uh, which is true. Uh, for minus, you can't really use the symbol because in writing, the minus symbol is also a hyphen and a dash, okay? So... Uh, so we don't use that symbol uh, only if we're writing math. We don't actually use it in literature. In literature, we actually write the word minus. Okay, uh, so minus two degrees. Because if you re if you put a hyphen, it's kind of like, uh, is that a minus or is that a hyphen? What is that? So careful with that. That's a little bit of a tricky one. Okay. All right. Chinook winds can raise the temperature by up to 15 degrees Celsius and can last anywhere from a few hours to a few days. Yeah, and it's plural, right? Days, very good. Okay, days. Calgary is also one of the driest cities in Canada as well as one of the, Miha says, sunniest. Yeah, one of the most sunny. Now, just a couple of interesting fun facts. Uh, just like other parts of the world, Canada is also getting warmer and warmer each year. So I would bet that Calgary's average highs are closer to about 25 uh, Celsius in the summer. And some of you are probably thinking, well, 25 is not that warm because in some places, like in India and some parts of the Arab world, you get much, much hotter uh, days, right? So some of you are thinking, yeah, 25, it's not that bad. Which is true, and I've traveled the world, and I've been to various places. However, interestingly, one fact that you should be prepared for is that the sun is very strong in some parts of Canada, including Calgary. Um, and uh, in the summertime also in Victoria and Vancouver. So um, when I was teaching students face-to-face um, uh, -face in Victoria, I had some students from India and from uh, Saudi Arabia, and they said, it's weird that it's not as hot as in India or Saudi Arabia, but it's the first time I'm getting sunburned because the sun is so strong. So uh, 23, 25 degrees in Calgary feels much hotter. It feels, in the summertime, it feels closer to 30, 33 degrees in the summer, okay? So, yeah, Abiman is saying the same. So, Abiman's saying in Germany, it's the same. Yeah, because it's more northern, right? So, the sun rays are very strong, okay? All right, Ferdovs is asking for 17. Can we write 23 Celsius? Uh, Ferdovs, you don't need Celsius, and you could get that wrong um, because... Uh, you have the word Celsius in the question. So average summer highs in Calgary reach how many degrees Celsius? And it's given here. If you don't have that word, if you have how many degrees and no Celsius, then you should write 23 Celsius. Otherwise, it's not needed. Okay. All right. Add up your marks. Save your marks for tomorrow. Tomorrow we will do part three, part four. And then you'll have your total raw score, and we'll convert that into band scores, okay? So hopefully you learned a lot of good tips from today's class. Uh, the audio, again, was coming from our website, so you can find that there with lots more audio and other, five other uh, practice exams as well and lots of videos. Uh, to join our premium package, it's always a good idea, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gltshelp.com for general. Hopefully I will see all of you tomorrow for part three and part four. And then I'll give you some more tips for those more challenging sections. Keep up the good work. Have a great rest of your day. I'm Adrian and I'm signing out from Budapest for now. Much love to all of you. Bye.